No doubt about it. Water-related activities are a blast. Exploring a river or lake in a rented boat is also great fun. But it's important to realize that nature's waterways aren't the same as a water park activity. Boating has its risks. And boating in a canoe, kayak, or rowing craft involves a lot more than just hanging on for the ride. The river itself is a natural environment with possible downed trees, rocks, powerful current, uneven slippery bottoms, and shorelines. Floating or paddling on a natural flowing river is a risk activity, which can result in injury or even death if done carelessly or recklessly. When you rent a small boat, you're in charge. You have complete control. That means the success of your outing depends on your personal preparation, behavior, knowledge, attitude, and skills. You need to be ready for whatever Mother Nature has in store for you. Everything from an unanticipated swim to changes in weather, temperature, and water levels. Before you shove off, let's review some essential information to help you make the most of your time on the water. This program will cover a variety of river levels and conditions. We'll look at trip preparation, equipment selection and use, strokes, river hazards, and general tips on safety and courtesy. If the air or water temperature is below 70 degrees Fahrenheit, you should wear protective clothing. Test the water with your hand to get an idea of what it will feel like if you get wet. Dress for the water temperature even when the air's balmy. For cooler conditions, clothes made of synthetics or wool offer good thermal protection even when wet. Cotton is the poorest choice. When wet, it dries slowly, clings to your skin, and actually wicks your body heat away from you. Wearing a windbreaker over several layers of clothing allows you to adjust your clothes to match changing temperatures. You lose over half your body heat through the top of your head. To help keep warm, wear a hat. Wear shoes to protect your feet. A large number of boating injuries happen to bare feet. If the water or air is 50 degrees or colder, wear a wet or dry suit and booties. Some rental facilities carry these. So if you expect to boat frequently in cooler conditions, you may want to purchase your own. Wear sunblock, even on cloudy days. If you wear glasses, a glass strap may keep them from getting lost. Drinks in non-breakable containers are important when you're spending time in the sun. And snacks or a lunch will help keep your energy up and help keep you warm on longer outings. While we're on the subject of how to get ready for an outing, let's consider some boaters' choice of beverage, alcohol. I haven't had enough. I think you need to drink a few more. Uh -oh. Half of all fatal accidents from small boats involve the use of alcohol. In many states, boating while under the influence of alcohol or drugs can result in fines and other penalties, including jail. I need you to bring your canoe right over here to the bank. I'm going to need to talk to you for a few minutes. More importantly, even a small amount of alcohol can impair your judgment, especially when paddling in the hot sun. Now, with your eyes, I want you to watch the tip of my pen right here. I don't want you to move your head from side to side. I want you to hold it just still. Okay. The Save the party for someplace other than on the river. Getting your boat loaded and launched is a cinch, if you know a few tricks of the trade. It's much easier to carry the canoe with a little help from a friend. Position yourself on opposite sides of either end. When you get to the shore, ease one end of the canoe into the water. We're moving down and flipped over and wallet fell right out. Floated down, I saw it for a couple seconds to try to get it, I couldn't get it. Fell right down, had MasterCard, Visa, Discover, all my credit cards, gotta go cancel those in a few minutes. Remember, everything you take with you is at risk of getting wet or lost. Lock valuables, purses, and wallets in a safe place, like the trunk of your car. Pack your car keys, a dry change of clothing, and your lunch in a watertight container. Take along only items you need on the water or at the takeout. Always have on a life vest. As an expert, I always wear a life vest. I am never on the river without one. The first step toward a safe, fun outing is to wear your life jacket. Life jackets come in a variety of sizes. Your life jacket must fit snugly and be snapped, snug and secure to give the best protection. 
Even if you're an excellent swimmer, wearing your life jacket keeps your head above water so you can help others or help retrieve floating gear. A life jacket also helps you stay warmer in cold conditions. Select a paddle that's the right size for you. As a general rule, your paddle should reach from the ground up to your chin, but lengths vary based on water and seating heights. Ask your outfitter. Load your boat so that it stays balanced end to end and side to side. Strap in your gear. Never leave lengths of rope loose in the boat. You could become tangled during a capsize. And by all means, never tie yourself or any person or pet to your craft. Steady the boat for your partner to climb aboard. When you need to move around in the boat, remember to step in the center. Keep your weight low and hold on to both sides to steady yourself. If you need to retrieve something from the water, paddle to it so you can pick it up without leaning your shoulders over the side of the boat. This helps to avoid capsize. Grip a canoe paddle by folding the fingers of one hand over the top of the grip while the other hand wraps around the shaft, thumb up. Your hand should be a little more than shoulder width apart. We ask that while you're on the river, you please do not splash with your paddles. You're going to find that they become very dangerous weapons. Once you start paddling, your hands get wet, you tend to lose your grip, they fly around, they hit the person in the back of you, they have a tendency to cause summer teeth. Some are here, some are there, therefore please do not splash with the paddles. Your ability to control your boat can keep you out of a lot of sticky situations. Here's a few basic strokes. To do the forward power stroke, reach comfortably in front of you. Insert the blade and pull the paddle back until it's about even with your hip. Keep your paddle shaft vertical and rotate your shoulders with each stroke to make the most use of your powerful back and shoulder muscles. To paddle backwards, simply do the stroke in reverse. Tandem partners should paddle on opposite sides of the canoe to keep it balanced. If the boat feels unsteady, paddle from a kneeling position. Canoes tend to turn away from the side the rear boater is paddling on. Corrective strokes are needed to keep the canoe going straight. The rear partner can steer the canoe by using the paddle as a rudder in between strokes. Slight adjustments of the paddle's angle will change direction of the canoe. The draw stroke moves the canoe sideways toward the side that you're paddling on. Reach out to the side of the canoe, plant the blade fully into the water, and pull the canoe sideways toward the paddle blade. The opposite of the draw stroke is the pry, which moves the canoe sideways away from the side you're paddling on. Start with the blade parallel in the water against the canoe. Holding the paddle shaft to the side of the boat, pull down on the paddle grip as if you're working a lever. Keep the stroke short. When traveling as a group, designate a lead boat and one to follow up the rear. Each boat should keep an eye out for the boat behind. If the boat you're watching lags behind, pull over and wait. Capsizing a small boat is no cause for panic. Remember to hang on to your paddle to ease equipment recovery. On flat, calm water, it's best to stay with your craft. In deep water, you may be able to empty and re-enter your boat with help. You can also paddle or swim your boat to shore even though it's swamped. To empty a swamped boat, roll it as you lift it out of the water. When paddling in a current, you may bump up against a submerged rock or a log. Lean toward the obstruction to keep yourself from capsizing as you work yourself free. Leaning the boat toward the obstruction counterbalances the force of the current traveling under your boat, which forces it to roll upstream. A boat capsized upstream fills with water. Often the water current wraps the swamped boat around the obstruction, making it extremely difficult to remove without help. If you capsize in moving current, get to the upstream side of the boat. Staying upstream of your boat keeps you from getting trapped between it and any obstacles. To swim in current, keep your feet floating at the surface and downstream of you to fend off rocks. If you try to stand in moving water that's more than knee deep, powerful currents can knock you over 
and you risk getting your feet jammed between rocks. Swim to knee-deep water before putting your feet down. A river can change dramatically depending on the level of water. High water or flooding can create dangerous fast-moving currents in places that are normally calm. Check with livery personnel, local authorities, stream gauges, and river guidebooks to find out if the river you plan to run is flowing dangerously high. The faster and more challenging the water, the higher level of paddling skill needed. Don't assume your skills are a good match for a river just because you see others paddling it. Slapping the blade down onto the water, sticking your hips back against the force of the paddle blade and bringing your boat upright or gunnels level. Take a river boating course from the American Canoe Association, Red Cross Chapter, local paddling club or outfitter if you want to develop the skills needed for paddling in moving current. When navigating river current, Follow downstream V's on the river surface to point you toward the most unobstructed channel. Carry your boat past any rapids you're unsure of. Stay toward the inside of river bends to maintain the most control. Current speed increases toward the outside of bends and may erode banks, dropping trees into the water. Trees or other items in the water which allow current to filter through them form strainers. Strainers are hazardous because water can pass through, but solid objects, like boats and people, get strained out and pinned by the force of the current. Paddle well away from strainers. Walk around river-wide strainers. If you do get swept into a strainer, lean the boat into it to counterbalance the current's force trying to roll the boat upstream. Work your boat cross-current off the strainer or climb onto it and pull your boat over the top. You may not easily recognize it if the river downstream of you passes over the top of a dam. Sometimes the only sign is a straight line across the river. Called a horizon line, it looks like a visual break in the flow of the water. An innocent looking line like this can hide a dangerous recirculating flow at the base of the dam. Dams and natural ledges that drop only a couple of feet can develop these powerful currents below them which can trap objects, including boats and people. Find out if the river you intend to paddle has any dams or dangerous drops. If there are, get to shore upstream of them in plenty of time. Carry your canoe around these hazards and launch a safe distance downstream. Weather can change dramatically throughout the course of an outing. Know the weather forecast. Be prepared for rain or wind. Thunderstorms are normally a surprise to everybody that's out there. You're in a pretty good conductive material when you're sitting in a canoe on water, so you don't really want to stay on the water. If you're out in the open, then don't go to the nearest big tree. Find something smaller. If you do run into trouble, walk to the nearest road and seek help. Use the emergency numbers provided by your outfitter. Other points to keep in mind, if swimming, never dive head first into unknown waters. Water levels in natural environments can vary dramatically within a short distance. A head first dive can result in severe and permanent spinal injury. Do not intentionally ram boats into one result another to pee injury and equipment. Pack allergy and other emergency medicines with you on the water. In case of bee sting or other mishap, emergency response may not be immediate. What? Hurt? Oh. Don't cut live trees or remove their branches and bark. Take out any trash that you bring with you. Littering is unsightly, causes injury to wildlife and people, and can result in a hefty fine. Leave all wildlife you see alone. Enjoy it from a distance. Be considerate of others on and off the water. That means not trespassing on private land and showing respect to those who are looking for peace and quiet. And please, give anglers plenty of room so you don't interfere with their sport. There's lots to learn about paddling small boats, but the tips we've covered will help your outing be enjoyable and safe. If you have any questions or want additional information, ask your outfitter. Remember, 
you're in control. The success of your outing is based largely on proper trip preparation, boat handling skills, and your ability to recognize and avoid potential trouble spots. As the operator of a boat, you accept personal responsibility for your actions. Stay safe, boat smart and responsibly, and you're sure to have a great day on the water.